Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center here in Towson, Maryland. Today's medical tutorial is on liver cancer. Liver cancer is divided into primary and secondary. By secondary we mean cancer that has spread to the liver from other areas. One of the more common uh, can cancers that spreads to the liver is colon cancer and there are separate videos describing the management of patients with metastatic colon cancer. Primary hepatocellular carcinoma is generally divided into two main subtypes. Hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma derives from the actual hepatocyte. Cholangiocarcinoma is a cell line that derives from the bile duct epithelium. Hepatocellular carcinoma is more, much more common than cholangiocarcinoma. So what are the associations and risk factors for hepatocellular carcinoma? Well clearly chronic hepatitis uh, of the B and C variety are the major risk factors. However, having said that, cirrhosis of the liver in any of any etiology is also a risk factor and is implicated in the transformation of normal hepatocytes into hepatocellular cancer. Uh, alcoholic cirrhosis, for example, uh, is common. The combination of alcoholic cirrhosis with either hepatitis B or hepatitis C uh, increases the risk of cancer even more synergistically. Hemochromatosis uh, or a disease of iron overload in the liver is a risk factor for liver cancer and clearly not in this uh, country, but parasitic infections such as schistosomiasis and environmental toxins such as alpha toxins sometimes seen in uh, peanut farms are uh, risk factors for hepatocellular cancer. The diagnosis, patients who have a history of chronic hepatitis B and hepatitis C are screened yearly with ultrasound as well as yearly alpha fetoprotein. Alpha fetoprotein is a blood protein that is secreted by liver cancer and elevated um, in patients who develop liver cancer. It is not elevated in everybody, uh, but at least 75 to 80 percent of patients with liver cancer will have an elevated alpha fetoprotein. Um, if there is a suspicious mass on screening, um, imaging studies such as an MRI or a CAT scan with contrast will show a mass with what we call hypervascular. In other words, it takes up, um, has blood vessels, and it's, it's more vascular than the actual liver itself. Biopsies either performed uh, percutaneously um, or laparoscopically sometimes are, are performed when the diagnosis is in question, um, and the tissue helps determine whether this is a malignancy in the hepatocellular cancer variety or not. Well the goal of treatment is to begin, the goal of treatment is dependent on a proper evaluation of the patient with liver cancer. And essentially with liver cancer you're dealing with two issues. One is the liver cancer operable from a technical standpoint but two is does the patient have a significant amount of liver disease that may preclude surgery is the cirrhosis if, um, significantly, um, has, a, has cirrhosis progressed to the point um, where liver function is impaired. And there are two methods um, that we use to determine um, the degree of liver dysfunction. The child's class classification, which is A, B, and C, has been around for quite some time. And that looks at the presence of uh, bilirubin nutritional status, presence or absence of ascites and so forth. The MELT score is the score that is used by most transplant centers uh, to determine the actual score based on bilirubin and, uh, and, how, and the INR which is how the blood forms clot. So these, these classifications can help determine the extent of disease in the liver or the progression of the cirrhosis. Evaluation for portal hypertension is important. Um, varices can sometimes be seen on CAT scan or on upper endoscopy endoscopy. Um, patients with cirrhosis uh, and portal hypertension, for example, may not be resection candidates. 
Um, the size and determination, the size of the tumor is important in determining prognosis as well as resectability and whether there or not there is gross or macroscopic vascular invasion. Uh, hepatocellular cancers and cirrhotics with portal, with segmental or main portal vein involvement, for example, um, fare poorer than patients without vascular invasion. Surgical treatment options in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma include surgical resection, if deemed feasible, in other words, that is actually removing a portion of the liver. Um, Milan criteria is important in determining whether the patient is a transplantation candidate. Um, the Milan criteria essentially um, groups patients with solitary tumors under 5 centimeters or multiple tumors under 3 centimeters. The results of transplantation when you get above the 5-6 centimeter range uh, precludes the utilization of scarce resources. So it's always a balance. Um, Transarterial chemoembolization is actually the use of chemotherapy and the um, embolization of hypervascular tumors. It's a combination of the two therapies, um, which achieves excellent palliation um, in patients either as a transplant, a bridge to transplantation, uh, or in patients who are not candidates for resection or transplantation. Radiofrequency ablation, or the use of uh, energy to burn these tumors, is also uh, in the surgeon's armamentarium. So how does a surgeon decide on treatment? Um, clearly, the, the determination as to whether the patient has cirrhosis of the liver is important. Uh, if so, determination of whether it is a, the patient is a child's A, B, or C, or what the MELD score is, is important. Uh, the determination of whether the patient has portal hypertension is important. Um, what is the patient's synthetic function? Is the prothrombin time normal? Uh, is the patient a transplant candidate? These are all important um, questions that need to be answered in the evaluation period in order to determine the optimal surgical therapy. I thank you.